All right, in today's Whiteboard Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about stress and resilience. And resilience is an individual's ability to handle stress. And whenever I talk about this subject, I like to use the analogy of a cup. And I've heard other people use varying analogies. I've heard of it as a thermometer. I've heard of resilience referred to as uh, a kitchen sink. But I like using the cup as my personal analogy. And essentially, this is an individual's resilience. This is their body. This is how much stress they can take in. And the stress they experience, whatever that stress may be, is like adding water to this cup. So some of that stress, you know, could be relationship stress, work stress, just general life stress, could be <clears throat> environmental stressors, pollution, secondhand smoke, allergens in the air like pollen. It could be exercise. Exercise can be a beneficial stressor, but it is a stressor. It can be food sensitivities. Eating a food that doesn't agree with you well is going to cause stress to your body. Lack of sleep is another common one. So the list goes on and on in terms of stresses that all of us experience on a daily basis. Some people will experience more than others and some people will experience very varying reactions to stress. So for if we're talking about food sensitivity, someone who has celiac disease Consuming gluten might be a very big stressor. It might fill their cup significantly more in terms of overall stress that their body is experiencing. For someone who isn't as sensitive to gluten, it may be just a minor stress. And so all of these things add up. Relationship stress, work stress, lack of sleep, allergies. And so these things build up and up and up. And at some point, and where that is depends upon the person, but often what you see is people start experiencing short term health consequences. So it could be getting sick more often. It could be things like acid reflux, gastric distress, uh, very liquid bowel movements. The list goes on and on in terms of what things people might experience over the short term minor health problems. And most people don't really think about those things. You know, it could be migraines. And most people think that those are perfectly normal and they just go about their daily lives and don't really think much more about it. But in reality, what's often happening is that all these stressors are kind of piling up essentially inside their body. It's, it's taking its toll, and they're only able to handle so much of it before they start experiencing those symptoms. And as an example, a lot of times when people are sensitive to foods, if they're not seriously <clears throat> allergic to a particular food, they might only be sensitive to that, they might only, I should say, notice symptoms when they eat that food at certain times of the year. So if someone's a student and they're going through finals week, they might notice adverse reactions to a particular food that the rest of the year, they really don't. Same goes for allergy season. Some people can eat certain foods other times of the year and not experience any sort of uh, side effects, but during allergy season because there's that stress on their body, they're going to experience some symptoms. And on uh, the reverse side of that, if someone's, for example, on vacation and they're laying around on a beach all day, their stress levels are very low, I will be right back. Someone's here. All right, I'm back. So going back to what I was talking about before, if someone's on vacation and their stress levels are very low because they're 
they don't, they're not worrying about work or anything like that, and they're just laying around on a beach all day, they may be able to consume some of those foods that they would normally have a reaction to um, and not experience any reaction to that because their body has such little, so few other stressors at that point that it's able to handle that. It's able to take care of that stressor and they're not going to experience any issues with those foods, at least not any outward issues. <clears throat> so, when it comes to exercise, I know I said that can be a stressor, and that is true, and that's one of the reasons why if you're sick, for example, exercising typically isn't the best option. I mean, if it's a little bit of a cold or something like that, it's maybe not the biggest deal, but if you're really sick, you need to allow your body the resources to get over that sickness. You can't be spending all those resources recovering from a tough workout. And so that's where having exercise that is on par with an individual stress levels really comes into play and things like autoregulation, which I talked about a couple episodes ago, because the lower your stress levels are, the more training you can handle. The higher your stress levels are, the less training you're going to be able to handle it. Because, you know, at best, your workouts aren't going to be productive if your stress levels from in other areas of your life are really high. And at worst, you're going to end up with some, some health problems, getting sick and things like that, because you're just taxing your body too much. But Appropriate levels of exercise are actually going to increase your resilience. They're going to increase your immune function. So it's important to exercise, obviously, which is why I help people with that for a living. But it helps people's resiliency, but it has to be appropriate amounts of exercise for the individual at that particular moment in time. Now, in terms of overall resilience, while it can be built, it can be improved through things like exercise, some people are just born with better resilience. They, it's just genetic. So if we were to look at someone like that, they might have a significantly bigger cup, which sounds kind of strange now that I'm saying that out loud, but essentially that's what it would be and they would be able to handle more stress before they start exhibiting any signs of, of health complications. So some people can handle more than others. What, what people really need to avoid is when those stress levels get so high it actually starts <clears throat> spilling over. That's essentially when you start running into serious health problems, more serious diseases, and things that aren't going to be easily fixed, and that's not going to correct itself in a week or two like you get over the flu. <clears throat> so that's when it gets really dangerous. And unfortunately, because most people don't realize that a lot of the, the symptoms that they're experiencing on a daily basis, like some of the examples I gave earlier, migraines, uh, just getting sick more often, you know, five times a year, something like that. Those are signs that overall stress levels are too high. Now, what those stressors are is just going to depend. <clears throat> but most people think that's normal in this day and age because they think, oh, everyone is sick a fair amount, everyone has migraines, everyone has stomach pain and bloating and gastrointestinal problems from time to time and that's not really the case. That's not, it may be normal now but it's certainly not good, it's certainly not how things should be. And so most people don't realize when they're getting further and further up here and, and they don't realize it until it's too late and they have an issue that they, that might cause them permanent consequences. So <clears throat> One of the best things that we can do is, you know, obviously I talked about exercise, increasing resilience through that, but we have to be able to control 
everything that we can. We have to control the variables that we can because you know, things like a death in the family, something like that, those are stressors that you can't control. Things are just going to happen that we can't predict and that are just going to take a serious toll. You know, it's going to be a, a big stressor. So we have to minimize all the stresses in our lives that we possibly can. So one of the easiest things to do is to get rid of offending foods in an individual's diet and take away the, the stress from, from that. That's an easy one to remove. Getting more sleep is a huge one. For some strange reason, people don't want to sleep more. I'm not really sure why that is. Now, in some cases, people may not be able to sleep more if they just had a child recently. You're not going to be getting as much sleep, so it's going to become increasingly important to take care of all the other variables. Like, you know, getting it, and you can do lots of things, like get an air filter, you know, a good air filter for your apartment, for your house, <clears throat> to kind of take care of some of those environmental stressors, to remove offending foods from your diet, to, you know, it could be something as simple as meditating on a daily basis to just lower overall life stress. There's so many different options to lower all sorts of st stressors in your daily life. And it becomes increasingly important to do those things so you can, once you minimize those, you have a lot more room to handle those unpredictable stressors. So if you manage to keep all of your stressors in your normal day-to-day -day life at a fairly low level, when something awful happens in your life that drastically increases the stress on your mind and on your body, hopefully you'll still be you know, below the threshold for smaller health problems like just getting normal illnesses, but at the very least you're not going to get to the point where it's just overflowing, you're at least going to you know, you might get sick a little bit, but you're not going to end up with any long-term health problems. Whereas if your stress levels are always up high and then something hits you out of the blue, you might end up with your cup overflowing and some really serious long-term health problems. And so I'm going to get a little bit in the next episode more into uh, food sensitivities and get a little bit more in-depth with that, but just trying to reduce stress as much as possible, the things that you can control, trying to reduce those things as much as possible, is going to pay dividends in terms of preventing any sort of long-term health consequences and even short-term health problems.